stay for a bit longer. <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact. And it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> I don't know why I had the growl thing going on. It just felt good. It just felt right for the title of today's story. Today we're jumping into r slash tales of neckbeards. Yes, indeed, there is some bleed over into r slash RPG horror stories as well. And actually, the whole thing was posted on my subreddit, r slash reads. But, you know, I don't really give too much credence to which subreddit the actual story is posted in. It's just like, where does the story truly fit? And just giving this story a quick scroll, there are three beards involved in it. So I'm going to put my money on r slash tales of neckbeards. This is uh, from Emma Lemme. E-M-L-M-E -E in the Discord server. And I just got to say thank you. Thank you so very much. This community is doing absolute work. And I could not thank you guys enough for the momentum of the channel. We're almost at 7K subs. As I'm making this video, it is 6,998. I'm going to go ahead and say thank you in advance for 7K subs because I don't think the channel is going to fall apart on the basis of this one video. It'll probably be 7K by the time I upload this. Let's be honest, not to like gas myself up or anything, but I, I really am just so amazed with how fast this channel has been growing. And it's all thanks to you guys sharing, telling people about it, spreading the word of the neckbeards that are out there. So thank you so, so much. Once again, we will keep the momentum going. I set a goal in December that my New Year's resolution was to get to 10k, and it's looking to me like we are just going to smash that goal wide open. So, wow. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing to me. You guys are amazing to me, so I just appreciate it so much, and I wanted to let you know. So, all the gushing out of the way. We'll get some uh, plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will jump right into some neckbeard slash RPG horror stories cringe. The mating call of Cthulhu. Ah, call of Cthulhu. I, I see what's going on here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I've been enjoying Red X's readings of neckbeard stories for some months, and I couldn't help but remember my first encounter with this type of person. Some months. Yeah, MLM is a guest like an OG of the channel, so <laughs> I appreciate you sticking with us. Although back then, I don't think the term neckbeard had actually been coined. I originally shared this story when I discovered r slash RPG horror stories about two years ago, so at first I thought of simply reposting it here or cross-posting it here, but then I reread what I had posted and wow, there were so many details missing. So here I am, dear readers, to share the full story. Take into account that English is my second language, so I apologize beforehand for any mistakes. And also, credit where credit is due. The title for this story was created by the one and only Ramtide. That's right, he's still lurking around. <laughs> he told me recently he's going to get back into writing, so we'll see what comes of it. I shared this story with him through Discord a couple of months ago when I started rewriting it, and he came up with this unsettling yet quite appropriate title. Anyways, on to the story. Prologue. This story took place around 10 years ago. Maybe a bit more, I can't exactly remember. Since this happened during the summer, I think I had just finished my first year of classes at university. In any case, I was about to turn either 18 or 19 at the time. That's a small detail, but it does add to the creep factor. <laughs> I should preface this by talking about one of my best friends. She changed schools in our last year of high school, but it's not like she moved to another town. She was simply fed up with the way some teachers taught the classes that she was in. So she finished high school at a different one. In her new high school, she quickly developed a crush on one of her classmates. I could see why, since he was absolutely her type. Thin, relatively attractive, and a metalhead. She, of course, wanted to get to know him better by spending time with him outside of classes. They would go into vastly different career paths after they both graduated high school, so uh, she had to be quick. <laughs> When he told her that he usually went to the tabletop gaming club of the Youth Association Center in the next town over, she knew that was her chance. Oh boy. 
tabletop gaming club, this, this guy might harbor a deeper, darker side than you knew. <laughs> However, she would have been mostly out of her element in such a place, so she wasted no time to give the nerdiest of her friends a call. And this is where I enter the story. <laughs> wing man! Or, or wing lady! <laughs> the very first day we went there, we couldn't help but notice that a considerable amount of people in this so-called youth group were quite a bit older than us. Probably around their late 20s, or somewhere in their 30s, but whatever, I guess. We went a couple of times and played some random tabletop games, and we had fun. Still, my friend thought she owed me a favor for tagging along, so she asked me how she could possibly repay me. I didn't really feel that was necessary, as I was having fun, but we were in the perfect place to grant one simple request. I'd recently discovered the works of H.P. Lovecraft, and I was hooked. I've always been a fan of horror and dark fantasy, and the general tone and atmosphere of his stories were exactly the kind of horror that I enjoyed the most. Back then, I think he was relatively unknown in our country, Spain, so I was dying to be able to find other nerds that I could talk with about Lovecraft stories and the Cthulhu mythos. Therefore, the way she could repay me was clear. Find someone in the club to run a short campaign of the role-playing game Call of Cthulhu for me. Well... She obliged and asked around. Some weeks later, we had a group ready to go. And thus, just like in many Neckbeard stories, here is the list of the Dramatis Personae. OP, myself of course, nerdy girl studying an engineering degree at the time, long-haired brunette that despite the burning summer sun in Spain is basically always pale, immediately regretted the choice of attire that day, the object of the Neckbeard's desires. <laughs> Uh-oh. San, my friend, born Colombian but raised in Spain, at the time she was studying to become a cook. I have no idea why the neckbeards left her alone. Maybe it was because of her skin color? Dark, while the rest of us were pale white. Her choice of attire? Maybe because she was given a male character? Or perhaps they just thought that she and her crush were actually a thing already. Speaking of which, she slowly lost interest in him, and he's not even present in the rest of this story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fickle, fickle. Newbie! I had completely forgotten about this guy, and I only remembered that he was there while reviewing the story. But he didn't do much, so you could understand why I forgot he was even there. He was a shy, thin, pale, nerdy guy that went to Sans class in the new high school. And the reason everyone is here, the fedoraless neckbeards of our tale. Keeper Beard, the guy running the game. In Call of Cthulhu, the dungeon or game master is instead called the Keeper of Arcane Lore, or just the Keeper, thus the name. He's definitely 10 or so years older than San, Newbie, and me, and he fits the traditional nerd stereotype to a T. Overweight, pale, dressed in black, etc. <laughs> Massive beard, the fattest of all the guys in the club, and most likely in his 30s. If Keeper Beard looked like the traditional nerd stereotype, with this guy's weight and not so clean clothes, this guy is even a level beyond that. <laughs> Rando Beards. I honestly can't remember anything about the rest of the guys involved, but I'm certain that there were at least two or three more guys at the table that also fit the fat nerd stereotype, and again, were older than us. What a youth group. <laughs> Get these 30 year old predatory men around these 18 year old girls. That's what we call a youth group. <laughs> okay. Wh who's running this thing? Shouldn't they have been like politely escorted out of the building? I'm sorry, you're no longer a youth. <laughs> you have to go. <laughs> I do really like Call of Cthulhu as a game, although I haven't had a chance to participate in one myself. From what I understand, it's like instead of being these overpowered heroes, basically everybody's just a frail human which I think is a pretty interesting dynamic. I did attempt to review a game called Call of Cthulhu on my gaming channel like three years back or something like that, but uh, that game was not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so I kindly set it aside. Anywho, now we get into the mating call. The day of the session finally came. The heat was particularly unbearable, so I decided to wear one of my favorite summer dresses, 
black at the top and bottom edges, but the rest had like a watercolor floral pattern. Thanks to the thin fabric of this sleeveless V-cut dress, I saved myself from absolutely melting at the bus stop as I waited for sand to arrive. But sadly, this also meant that I was showing more cleavage than your average neckbeard is used to seeing at any point in their lives. <laughs> Huge mistake on my part. I'm an idiot, I know. That does not make you an idiot. You should be able to wear whatever you want to wear, OP. These dudes need to keep their freaking eyeballs in their head and learn to treat other people like people, even if they do got vaginas and stuff. But I get it. They don't get out much. <laughs> what a tangent. All right, game face on. I should have checked who was going to be there first, but I hadn't noticed any red flags from the people in the club before, so I just had no reason to worry. San, when she finally arrived, had been more sensible than me and had chosen to wear a t-shirt and summer trousers. We walked to the youth center from the bus stop and when we got there, we recognized Newbie, looking as shy as ever. I don't think he said more than a simple hi to us. Aside from him, we were not too thrilled to discover that the only other people there were our group of sweaty neckbeards, who quickly led us to a table, and I remember sitting in between Keeperbeard and San with Massive Beard facing me. It's well known that neckbeards usually emanate a particular stench. <laughs> But thankfully, as it was summer, they didn't smell any worse than would be expected from sweating overweight men. <laughs> I think you're being too kind there. Although sweating overweight men is, is quite evocative. <laughs> when we were finally ready to get started, Keeper Beard gave us some quick details of the adventure. It was a one-shot that he had found online. For those of you not used to tabletop RPGs, a one-shot is a game that's short enough to be completed in just a single session. As with most Call of Cthulhu games, it took place in the 1920s, and it started with the news that a college professor had been brutally murdered in his house. With this little bit of info, he gave us our character sheets. Since it was a one-shot, these were pre-made characters. This way we didn't have to waste time with character creation. The rando beards and newbies got to play as police officers or private investigators, I don't remember their exact role. Massive Beard was another college professor that worked in the same department as the victim, while San got lucky and was a dilettante, basically a rich dude that had an interest in rare foreign art of all kinds, and he used to be friends with the victim. So far, so good. But then, I was handed my character sheet. I was Massive Beard's secretary, or rather, Massive Beard's Sexy secretary. A sex retary, if you will. <laughs> Keeper Beard started to describe my character by saying, She was a party girl that liked to get around. <laughs> As he was describing her physique, the only character for which he had a physical description, by the way, he was interrupted by the other Beardos. Rando Beard, so quite attractive, right? Massive Beard, the word you're looking for is fuckable. <sighs> Keeper Beard, well, uh, fuckable doesn't necessarily require someone to be attractive, though. Uh, she's both. Rando Beard, let's just agree on hot, then. <laughs> Massive Beard, or uh, ravishing. <laughs> <laughs> My lady looks ravishing today. They went on for a bit, trying to decide what was the best word to describe my character, while I was sitting there, mortified. <laughs> Looking at my friend and feeling watched by prying eyes. Newbie didn't take part in the wording debate, but just looked as meek and confused as us, probably thinking that the most sensible course of action was to take no action, actually. So he remained silent, as he basically always did. The game finally began, with the rando beards and newbie investigating the scene of the crime. Keeper Beard described how parts of the victim's body were strewn all around his living room. It was then that San remembered her cooking lessons and said something that made the neckbeards back off for a while. To be fair, cutting a person's up with a right kitchen knife wouldn't be very different from slicing a chicken. All the greasy man-children, <laughs> of varying sizes, looked at her dumbfounded, while San and I laughed at their reaction. 
I forced myself to laugh a bit harder, hoping that the neckbeards would think that I was some kind of psycho and just leave me alone. <laughs> it only worked on them for a little while. Newbie's expression, on the other hand, could be described as a deer caught in the headlights. <laughs> Keeper beard. Uh, no, no, it's clear that a knife couldn't have done this. It's more like his body has exploded. The rando beards try to gather more information about the crime, but their efforts didn't amount to much compared to the ancient powers that rule supreme over those who dare try their luck in their eldritch domain. The Great Old Ones, simply known as the Percentile Dice. <laughs> None of their dice rolls were successful, and they had to leave the place empty-handed. Therefore, the only logical next step was to investigate the acquaintances of the victim, aka the rest of the players, starting with Massive Beard. Once on the college campus, Massive Beard and I didn't have much to say about the victim, beyond what Little Keeper Beard had told us, so Massive Beard sent me to fetch the spare key to the victim's office, where he tried to find any letters, notes, or documentation that his character could have exchanged with his now deceased colleague. Luckily, he seemed to be still processing my reaction to what San had said before. Either that, or maybe he had a sliver of decency, because throughout the whole ordeal that this session was, he never tried to exert the power that his character had over mine. Massive Beard was not able to learn anything useful, but I obtained the office key, so we all went there to investigate. Inside the office, we managed to find some information about what the professor had been working on, as well as San's name among his contacts. While all of this had been going on, San's character had received a visit from an acquaintance that wants him to sponsor a play that they want to put out in the theater next month. I can't remember how, but... We did manage to learn that the professor had been involved in the screenplay as it was based on an old tome that he had been translating, The King in Yellow. And any of you out there that are fans of the Cthulhu mythos would be familiar with that title. But we still didn't know exactly what had happened to the professor, so we decided that we needed to track down members of the theatrical troupe and those who worked on the screenplay to interrogate them. At this point, Keeper Beard keeps looking at his watch and declares, Ugh, there's no way we're finishing today before the center closes for the evening. Uh, this is as good a stopping point as any, so why don't we continue this in the cave? OP, I'm sorry? A cave? Massive Beard? Yeah, we we'll just give it that name because of the entrance, but it's a place that we senior members of the club have rented. <laughs> so we can continue playing when we have to leave this place in the evening. Uh, he explains to me, and then he turns to Keeper Beard. It's a great idea. The others are there already, and we could have some drinks too. San and I shrugged. Don't shrug, drunk neckbeards, bad news. <laughs> <laughs> By then, it seemed the gross comments from before had subsided, and Newbie would also be coming, so... We agreed to go. The place was not that far from the youth center, but the neck beardicus maximus specimen is not suited for leisurely strolls. <laughs> so they had to drive there. Sharing a ride with these neck beards was not particularly appealing, but at least San, Newbie, and I all shared the same car, so, you know, strength in numbers and all that. Was it a neck beard mobile? Did it have like McDonald's cups all over the floor? <laughs> I guess if it's not in the story, then it's not something to note. But whenever I hear about a neckbeard's car, I just imagine a rolling pile of trash. <laughs> I'm not sure that I can properly convey the strangeness of the location of this so-called cave, but I'll try my best. They parked in front of an apartment building and took us to a nearby passageway that created a tunnel in the side of the building, effectively connecting the street where we had left the cars to the street behind the building. Cave was an appropriate way to put it. Despite the summer sun still shining with enough force, the long passageway was not properly lit. More unsettling was the discover that our destination did not lie at the other end of the corridor, but within the single rusty door right in the middle of it. <laughs> Bad vibes, bro. <laughs> the not so large room 
that the door hid was barely habitable, and I could smell the humidity coming from the gray walls. Oh god. It was not unlike the basement in Lovecraft's The Shunned House. It was the dank, humid cellar, which somehow exerted the strongest repulsion on us, even though it was wholly above ground on the street side, with only a thin door and a window-pierced brick wall to separate it from the busy sidewalk. We scarcely knew whether to haunt it in spectral fascination or to shun it for the sake of our souls and our sanity. For one thing, the bad odor of the house was strongest there, and for another thing, we did not like the white fungus growths which occasionally sprang up in rainy summer weather from the hard earth floor. That's a good excerpt. What did Mona the Mantis say? These neckbeards remind me of fungus. They're all uh, erect with thirst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't recall there being any actual fungus growths, but it wouldn't have surprised me if there were. As we entered, I noticed that at the back of the room was a reduced group of about four people hunched over a table painting Warhammer miniatures. I was relieved to see that one of those people was another woman, even though her hair was greasy, and she wore a somewhat dirty and childish pink tracksuit that seemed really quite odd for her age. I'd guess that she either wore that because she was painting minis, or because that's what she found when she was looking for discount Lolita clothing. <laughs> she got up and, without saying anything to the rest of us, went straight to Massive Beard and kissed him, then went back to her seat. Apparently, they were married? <laughs> we sit down at another table close to the entrance and resume the session. Each one of us would try to get in contact with different people, and my character found herself alone in one of the bars that she usually went to, according to Keeper Beard, where one of the screenplay writers would allegedly be. As I got inside, I noticed him, sitting at the table by himself. Not knowing what else to do, I approach him, and in character, I simply say, I see the seat is empty, and you look lonely. Would you care for some company? With just this sentence... The whole group of neckbeards lost their collective shit. <laughs> Pray, tell me, was it really that erotic? Is it the neckbeard dream that a random woman suddenly approaches them asking to sit by their side? <laughs> Why am I even asking? That is exactly their dream, isn't it? <laughs> Nailed it. I don't recall what exactly they were saying, but it was something along the lines of Massive Beard. Hehe, <laughs> OP, offer him something more. That lucky bastard will be telling you everything you want to know and more. <laughs> this spoken from the guy whose freaking wife was sitting at the other table. Keeper Beard. I wouldn't even make you roll to see if you're successful. <laughs> What's the point? It'd be an insta-success. The hooting of the horny neckbeards continued. <laughs> and I didn't know how to react, so my brain kind of just disconnected. This time, San couldn't think of any other clever interjections that would scare them off. And Newbie, well, he was... He was there too, I guess. <laughs> I imagine that this time both of us looked like twin deers frozen in place. At this point, I basically lost all interest in the game, and I just sat there for the rest of the evening waiting for it to be over. <laughs> As such, I can't give many details about what happened afterwards, except the disastrous ending. We failed to learn enough about the play to discover that it was actually a ritual to summon an avatar of Haster, the king in yellow. We allowed the play to be performed, and when Haster made his triumphant entrance, all of our characters were instantly driven insane and or outright killed. <laughs> At least it's mercifully over, I guess. So, you know, the usual gaming experience in Call of Cthulhu. Keeperbeard finished describing the gruesome events and said, To be quite honest, I don't know how you would have been able to stop what was going on. We didn't care for explanations. As soon as he finished, San and I quickly booked it out of their neckbeard cave, never to set foot in it or the youth center ever again. 
We ignored their pleas to just stay for a bit longer. <laughs> but we did leave Newbie there. Oh, no. <laughs> Still frozen, almost like a sacrificial lamb. <laughs> Poor little guy. He didn't do nothing. <laughs> Which reminds me that we never heard what became of Newbie. See why I said before that I had forgotten he was even there? I hope he didn't become yet another neckbeard and just found a different group to hang around with. I feel bad that we left him there, but really we just wanted to get out of there ASAP. San still kept in contact with her crush a little bit longer to learn that these senior club members demanded that the other people in the club pay the rent of not just the space in the youth center, but also of their little neckbeard man cave, which most people in the club, understandably, did not use. Jesus. <laughs> All of this ended up with the disbanding of the club itself, and somehow, Massive Beard's marriage as well. <laughs> no idea how that happened, but to be honest, it's really not my business, and I could not care less. <laughs> so, there you have it. It's probably not as creepy or cringy as any of the other neckbeard encounters that you can find on Reddit, but I felt incredibly uncomfortable that evening. I had always heard stories of awkward nerds or even just misogynistic ones that don't welcome women into their spaces, but it was my first time ever experiencing such a thing for myself. Then these same people complain that women don't like their hobbies. <laughs> the hobby is not the issue. Their attitude is. Anyways, thanks for reading. I hope you have a better evening than the one that I had all those years ago. Honestly, that place had bad vibes written all over it. I don't know how you mustered up the courage <laughs> to go into there, outnumbered by neckbeards, mind you, just to finish a Call of Cthulhu game that honestly doesn't seem like it was all that interesting. It doesn't seem like Keeper Beard had any plan for, like, how to resolve this aside from Haster making his grand entrance and, and killing everybody, basically. Crappiest dungeon master I ever seen. <laughs> I think they kept things relatively tame in the youth center because there were people who weren't in this, like, inner ring or whatever it is that's basically embezzling money into renting out some shoddy little weird place in order to run their weird games and paint Warhammer miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here, dude? But then once you're in the in the den, surrounded by the inner clique, then they're hooting and hollering over, would you like some company? <laughs> <laughs> Neckbeards swear that they're in, like, the Renaissance, and a girl shows a little bit of ankle, and they're like, oh, harlot! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't get it. I don't want to, honestly. I am somewhat curious about Massive Beard and his wife and, and their breakup and all that, but honestly, I'm glad that you just removed yourself from the situation, OP. The study of neckbeards is not worth risking yourself over, honestly. But yeah, I like to think that uh, girls are more welcome in nerd spaces recently, but uh, that might not be completely true, especially for the deepest nerd dens. You know what I mean? Tabletop gaming, that is... Some strong nerdery. <laughs> Might take a few more years for them to catch up with all that. But as always, thanks for sharing. Fits right in with the niche of the channel, and I definitely appreciate it. Just a bit of light cringe to start the week off nicely. <laughs> and I think that's all right. If you guys did enjoy the episode, I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Amazon affiliate, my Teespring, Wifey's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X, my personal subreddit, r slash Red X reads, their social media, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, oh, and my beautiful, wonderful, generous patrons, whose names you're seeing on the screen, and I'd like to thank them all, but specifically, Zero MMX, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Fair, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Candy Sora, DigiNZ, Fire Drake, Little Lone Wolf, Miss Monday, Silent Revolver, J. M. Coon, Leon Embers, TSM Kirby, Redwind, Synaptic Boomstick, Jerry, and Staples Yeet. Oh, and we also have another person joining us quite recently, so welcome to the fold, 
Davindra. Definitely appreciate the support. Some things do get demonetized. There's very little chance that this will get demonetized. It was very clean with the language, and I, I appreciate that, at least on some level. But you know, from time to time, it does happen, so I got my patrons. They are so wonderful that I could just lean back on them and not have to worry about that too hard. Obviously, if anybody else can support, that is absolutely massive to me. Thank you so, so much in advance. But if you can't, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because really, the views is how my beard stays buttered. <laughs> In order to join us again, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe watch some more Red X videos. Hey, I like that idea. <laughs> Please always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.